Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty, and welcome to this bonus episode. There are words of the year to talk about, and I just could not let 2023 go by without talking about them. And I'm here today with Jessica Ferris, who joined us recently to talk about her new book, Words from Hell. And she is so kind to come back and talk about words of the year with us. Welcome, Jess. Thank you so much. You know, I love the show, and I'm excited to be back. Yeah, and um, see, we are recording this December 16th, but it won't come out until, I believe, the 28th. So there could be more words of the year that we uh, don't get to that come out after the show, but at least you'll get the big picture, some of them. So, um, you know, I I had been thinking about doing this, and then when, Jess, when you came out with um, the Reagan words of the year, I thought, I just can't let the year go by without doing this, and, and you're the perfect person to do it. So do you want to start talking about uh, Reagan Reagan's word of the, Reagan communications word of the year? Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to writing about etymology for our listeners, I'm also the director of content at Reagan Communications. So I made a list of 10 words of the year for uh, Reagan, or sorry, for Reagan's com- audiences. So um, these words for were for communications professionals and PR professionals as well. Um, and as you well know, Mignon, because you uh, lead webinars for Reagan PR Daily, communicators are also writers and their relationship with with um, AI is uh, learning how to ethically and creatively incorporate AI into their work streams to boost their productivity um, and maintain quality. Um, so they, they're, they're, you know, that's been a key skill set that they've been developing this year. And a lot of the words of the year we've seen have been focused on AI, as I'm sure you've addressed. Um, so the the key area for communicators is um, prompting chatbots. So that was the number one word of the year for Reagan and PR Daily was prompt. And within that umbrella, I would include skill sets such as uh, training on AI or training and AI on your style and voice, building your own GPTs and other adjacent skills. Um, uh, so Reagan wasn't the only uh, company to have prompt this year either, were you? That's right. Um, we'll get into Oxford's word of the year in a moment, which is also AI adjacent, but one of their runners up was prompt. Um, right. And uh, although AI has factored into like PR and comms in contexts like data management and customer service chats, learning the art of the prompt really became a requirement for working in that field over the past year. Um, and um, obviously, I was not as clever as I thought I was um, when coming up with this term, but I uh, I came up with it before I was aware of Oxford's choice. And um, part of the reason is it's a little bit of a double entendre. Organizations as a whole and communicators in particular need to be prompt in upskilling in this area to remain competitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you weren't the only one who um, your word was chosen by someone else. This year has been, I mean, as as people will notice by the end, almost every word this year relates to AI in some way. And AI was the actual word chosen by at least two organizations. Um, Collins Dictionary was the first one to come out with AI. Um, obviously short for artificial intelligence. And then the national, you know, the Association of National Advertisers chose AI as the word of the year. And they said it was the widest margin in their 10 year history um, for that word. They vote. And so um, I think the next runner up was um, something like personal purpose. It was purpose. And but it was just a distant second to AI. And so, you know, huge theme for the year. And again, like multiple, multiple organizations chose it. You know, it doesn't surprise me that purpose had such a large gap. I feel like that was the word of the year in the advertising space like three years ago. Like brand purpose was the thing, the drum that they've been beating for quite some time. And although AI isn't new, it was absolutely the word you got tired of hearing uh, throughout this year. Right. Yeah. I think you're going to talk about hallucinate next. And, uh, but I had heard of pe- people when I saw it was announced, people um, said they'd never heard it used in relationship to AI. And I thought, I mean, I, I, I couldn't go, you know, two days without hearing it. <laughs> so we all, we all live in different environments. Absolutely. Um, Yes, Dictionary.com's word of the year is AI-themed, but not one that you might expect. Uh, They said that to determine their word of the year, they gave themselves a prompt using, there's that word again, prompt, um, (laughs) 
Using lexicography and data science, choose a single word that best represents at this moment AI's many profound ramifications for the future of language and life. And the result was the word hallucinate, but a specific definition of the word that was just added to their dictionary this year. Um, it's specifically when an artificial intelligence produces false information contrary to the intent of the user and presents it as if it is true and factual. It's called hallucinating. Um, and their example sentence was, when chatbots hallucinate, the result is often not just inaccurate, but completely fabricated. And I've personally witnessed chatbots hallucinating in my work. I asked ChatGPT, for instance, for the etymology of uh, several words that I knew to have common myths associated with them in online spaces. And sure enough, um, it presented the myths as if they were fact. So that that's an example of hallucination. Um, and just just to humor me a little bit, uh, the origin of hallucinate is one of my favorites. Um, it's from yes. uh, Latin and Greek sources meaning to wander in the mind. And um, the, uh, the English word dates back to at least the 1630s when it's recorded in a few texts with the apparent meaning to like waver, like to hallucinate between truth and falsehood which I think is kind of a full circle moment for today's definition that we just that just earned word of the year. Definitely. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I think the first thing I ever wrote about AI was about a hallucination. About a year ago, I had an experience similar to yours, and I asked it to recommend books that had librarians as a protagonist. Mm -hmm. And it came up with, you know, four or five that were great. And then there was one that just did not exist. And but it was by a real author. And, you know, it might be something he would have written, <laughs> but he, it just wasn't it was not a real book. And, and so I wrote up the uh, a blog post about uh, AI hallucinating. And that and, and it's interesting, too, because one of the you know, I, as, as I did, um, in the webinar, I did with with you at Reagan.com. Um, it's not Reagan. Is it Reagan.com? It's Reagan That's Communications. Right. Reagan.com. Reagan okay. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. So I did the advanced AP style webinar. And because AI is such a big thing this year, you had me include a section on um, AI for AP, AP style. And one of the things they emphasize is to um, not ascribe human characteristics to AI like ChatGPT. And I've always thought that hallucinate sort of um, walks that line because when you say that AI has hallucinated, in a way it feels like you're ascribing a human characteristic or condition at least to that machine. And yet it is the industry standard term. It's what they use to talk about the mistakes that the, the AI tools make. It's, it's a real Absolutely. industry term. <laughs> Rather than saying that it, you know, generates misinformation or something along those lines, which is a little more on the nose and a little less um, psychedelic, shall we say. <laughs> right. I loved the graphic that uh, if, if any of you have seen it um, online, uh, dictionary.com had a fabulous chaotic mm -hmm. graphic to go with their word hallucinate. Um, beautiful piece of artwork. I agree. Um, I'm interested to see if next year's words of the year will be AI focused, um, because I, like next year, I, I think that the year will, it will be a year of AI competitor drama. Like, um, there's, uh, like ByteDance was using open AI's tech to build its own large language model or LLM, which is like the, the model that makes generative conversation conversational AI possible. Um, apparently that's a pretty big faux pas and the, now they've been banned. So that's been a thing. <laughs> and then there's, um, Grok, which like Bloomberg has an article that says it could overtake chat GPT, but I doubt it. Um, that's yeah. at, that's Elon Musk's like, uh, subscriber only AI chat bot that was named after Heinlein's, uh, stranger in a strange land and supposedly informed by Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But I, you know, we'll see. Um, it, it also does not, it, it is a, like a function of hallucination because it profess, it doesn't profess to present information neutrally, but instead is designed to answer with quote unquote, a bit of wit and a rebellious streak and is useful to people, all, all backgrounds and pol political views, which just reads as like, this is probably going to be politically in a certain direction in the context of Elon Musk's, um, diatribes, um, 
However, you know, evidently someone put it to the test test and it ended up being more like politically liberal than chat GPT in many <laughs> contexts. So apparently they're working to try to make it more conservative. So that'll be <laughs> interesting. It also, oh it also, God. it also plagiarized chat GPT, um, which is fascinating because this was apparently experts predicted this happening. Wild, mm-hmm. wild. Yeah, well, ChatGPT itself was one of the words of the year. Mm-hmm. So um, The Economist and the Shanghai Daily, actually, which is, I believe, the only English newspaper in Shanghai, both chose ChatGPT, which stands for Chat Generated Pre-Trained Transformer. And yes, I did have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I find myself wondering, you know, you were thinking next year, Will, I was wondering if ChatGPT will become like Google, if we'll use it as a verb, if the brand name will become so, um, you know, genericized that we will say like, oh, I searched ChatGPT when we were searching Grok or Claude or one of the other ones. Um, I kind of think not because I'm not sure that ChatGPT is going to win um, the competitive race by that much. It's, it's, it's probably the best one out there right now but i'm not sure if it's going to hang on to that um crown um it was wikipedia's most viewed page last year too the chat gpt page so you know and it's the one that i think of when i you know i i started as a side project i'm writing a a newsletter about ai called um, ai side quest and you know it's just like a little side project i'm doing and every time i write about it i i'm should i refer to these tools as ai should i refer to them as large language models can i just call them chat you know I, i know i can't call them all chat gpt but i'm tempted to because that's the name that everyone knows so, mm-hmm. you know, I feel tempted to use it in the way you might say I Googled something, but I don't and I resist that. So I, I think it'll be interesting to see what the year, next year holds. Yeah, you know, I think um, I think the way Google has started uh, incorporating AI into its uh, search engine has is almost more natural in terms of like actual fact finding. Um, and it, it's a little more useful um, because it also includes the sources from which it's drawing its information. Um, one thing that I think could save ChatGPT if they actually commit to it, if OpenAI decides to commit to it, is that um, the Data and Trust Alliance announced data provenance standards um, intended to provide clarity around the information that forms the foundation of AI generated works. Um, so like basically, basically food labels saying where each piece of information came from and how like what recipe went into AI generated text and images so the hope is that like much like food safety labeling that uh, provides information about how and where food is produced and handled the standards will provide users with the ingredients and sources that AI text or image generators use to develop their content which I like that a lot because it it um, it lends authorship to the original information and sourcing. Yeah, no, that's great. A tool that I've been using called Perplexity AI gives the links to all oh. the facts from where it gets the information. And um, and I, I feel like I should caution people that even when you see the sources there, you need to check them because they, they aren't always, they don't always support the fact that the AI has given you. Um, I heard I heard the same thing about Bing yesterday. So it'll give you the sources, but those sources might not support what it's saying it supports. So if, if, if you're looking up facts, be incredibly skeptical and click through on those sources um, and check that they really are, or you know, better yet, verify it yourself from in some, some other way. Like don't trust the facts you get from any of these large language models slash chat GPT slash AI tools. <laughs> I would hope that people were doing that already with sources like Wikipedia, but I'm pretty sure that like, many people are not. Yeah, and I think that one of the things these tools like ChatGPT do is they give you the answer in such a confident, clear way that it's easy to believe it mm-hmm. um, in a way that that is, I think, more so than a lot of the other ways that we get information online right now. So um, don't be lured in to uh, that feeling of, oh, this confident, friendly friend of mine just told me a fact that just, it must be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so sure. <laughs> 
Absolutely. So, speaking of friends, another um, word of the year is authentic from Merriam-Webster. And this um, comes from the Greek originally um, that meant original or genuine. And, you know, I think this was so interesting because I remember authentic – you know, but wow, probably seven or eight years ago being a word that I was sick to death of hearing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think everyone was talking about how millennials, you know, valued authenticity and it was a big deal years ago. And so at first I was surprised when I saw that it was the Merriam-Webster word of the year. And then I realized, again, it's in the context of AI and it has to do with determining whether a, a photo or a piece of content is authentic or fake. Um, one of their runners up was deep fake, actually. So, you know, we had a lot of deep fake images produced by AI this year that, that people had to deal with. One cool thing that uh, that gives me a little bit of hope is um, some of the reactions that you see, um, you know, as as quickly as AI is advancing, um, it's also being used to combat some of the, the things that we're afraid of happening. Um, so, for example, um, in the realm of deep fakes, uh, I believe it was Intel developed a tool that can that can determine whether a video um, is a deep fake by basically like when you or I talk, we can only see each other's faces as they are. Um, but there are micro changes in the colors of your skin because there is blood going to different parts of your face. So, um, a, their tool is able to determine whether it's, whether a video is a deep fake or not, because a deep fake will not have those micro changes in color from blood flow. Wild. Mm -hmm. I had not heard that. Yeah, I do. I don't know the answer okay. to this either, but I, I wonder like to what degree um, it's able like if it if its accuracy is impacted by people of different skin tones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was just going. You had reminded me that I feel like I should also warn people against the text based AI um, identification tools. So especially in a lot of schools, um, they have new tools that are claiming that they can identify AI written essays, for example, and they are wildly inaccurate. And they're, they're flagging things that aren't written by AI quite often, and they are particularly susceptible to misflagging essays written by people for whom English isn't their first language. So it's just something about the, the way the language is a little bit different, and these tools are saying, oh, that was written by AI when it wasn't, and it's causing students all sorts of problems and stress. And um, so be very, very cautious about using those tools that claim they can identify AI written text because they're not very good, most of them. Right now, today, you know, maybe a year from now they will be, but if you're listening to this today, they're not. <laughs> the world of complications that arises from this technology, right? <laughs> Yeah, so many complications. And um, I think that we had one word of the year to wrap up, one word that wasn't AI focused uh, that you were going to talk about. That's right. Uh, Oxford University Press selected Riz as its word of the year. And um, it's defined as style, charm, or attractiveness, the ability to attract a romantic or sexual partner. And this actually does have an AI tie-in. I'll get to that in a second. No. Um, it does. <laughs> um, but uh, it can, so it can be a noun. I have riz uh, or a verb, like you can riz someone up or attract them. Um, it's attributed in uh, most contexts to YouTuber Kai Sinat. I hope I pronounced his name right. Um, he introduced it in a video in 2021. And um, a lot of people say it's short for charisma, which makes sense. Um, it, it sort of like works in the same way that the word like fridge comes out of refrigerator. But um, it, Kai says that it's not. It's more of a hmm. more of an inventive word. So he also used phrases like uh, W Riz or L Riz, basically winning or losing at having Riz. <laughs> I sound so old saying this. <laughs> um, but uh, Kai it's said he stopped. Say, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's sort of like, it, it reminds me a little bit about how like jazz has been used in the past. Like it's been, it has been several parts of speech in the same way. Um, but Kai says he doesn't use it anymore because TikTok butchered the word. Um, it's really common over there. You'll probably run into it if you go on TikTok. Um, he, <laughs> it's also been boosted by celebrities like Tom Holland, who said he didn't have much riz and had to play the long game to date Zendaya. 
Um, and then uh, it's also been used by public figures like uh, Scaramucci used it to say that Ron DeSantis has no riz, which I would generally agree with. But I also like listening to rich Gen X public figures use the phrase is to use another word for my Zoomer friends a little cringe. <laughs> Um, Definitely cringe. <laughs> so the AI tie-in that I was reading about just yesterday, though, this isn't like specifically associated with its uh, word of the year, but there is an AI-powered dating assistant called Riz, which suggests <laughs> that um, it, it suggests conversation ideas for dating app users. So it can come up with your opening line on Tinder or Bumble or whatever, and then you can ask it what you should say next in response to your potential partner's message. Oh my gosh. So we are going to have um, AI chatbots talking to each other in the chat on dating apps. So you <laughs> like if if each per, if a person on each side of a conversation has this, they're just the bots talking to each other. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, I did. That reminds me of a story. I'm, I may not get the details on this exactly right. So I'll try to be kind of vague. But um, I remember a story from several years ago before um, chat GPT was a thing before any of this happened when they were experimenting with um, artificial intelligence and machine learning and they had two um, bots speaking to each other just con conversing and over time they started developing their own abbreviated language like they started abbreviating words so much and then making their own dialect it was fascinating oh I'm gonna I'm going to look up that up and find out more about it. That is fascinating. That's a good one. If I can find it, I'll put a link to it in the show notes because that mm -hmm. would be really cool to read about. I'm sure people would love that. It was a little creepy too, but it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jess, for helping us round up the words of uh, 2023. Well, to wrap up, thank you so much for being here. Um, we want to talk about our books. I have the Grammar Daily. Um, I'll put a link to my AI newsletter in the show notes and to my course with Reagan Communications that um, Jess helped put together. And Jess, why don't you thank you so much first. And why don't you tell people about your book and where they can find you? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I just released the book Words from Hell. It's an etymology dictionary focused on naughty, nefarious, and secretly salacious words, among many others. Um, they get, you can buy it anywhere books are sold, and then you can also find me on my website at Useless Etymology and on TikTok at Jess Zafaris. Um, thanks so much for having me on the show. This has been so much fun. So, Excellent. Um, have, have a great new year, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye. That was fun. I am loving your book, by the way. It is so much fun. <gasps> Thank you. I loved yours, too. Thank you. You can clip that in if you want, <laughs> like a, a live oh. testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, oh, I didn't stop recording. I thought I had.